Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2009 Volkswagen Touareg. We're going to be doing a transmission flush on this. We're going to change the filter first, clean up the pan, get the dirt load out of the transmission. And uh, the fluid we'll be using today will be the Amsoil multi-vehicle ATF. And uh, this is synthetic, uh, runs 20 to 50 degrees cooler than petroleum-based oils, extends the life of the tranny, gives you a much smoother shifting. Here's a spec sheet on the Amsoil synthetic ATF, the signature series. And uh, first thing I want to show you here is there's two different ones here listed on this page. One is this uh, red one is the older formulation uh, multi-vehicle synthetic ATF and uh, then the blue bag here this one right here is uh, it's a low viscosity fuel efficient synthetic ATF and that's what most of your newer transmissions are going to call for. Um, the thing about this uh, chemical engineering synthetic is it uh, reduces the operating temperature of your transmission by 20 to 50 degrees over petroleum based fluids and uh, the, the life of the fluid is significantly longer as well. As you uh, drop that temperature out of that transmission, all the soft parts inside last a whole lot longer. All the seals, uh, all the piston seal rings, um, as you drop the heat by 20 to 50 degrees, the life of those soft components goes up significantly and that extends your transmission life. And as an example, we have a, uh, a taxi fleet, severe service taxi fleet field, uh, field trial this was in Las Vegas. Um, what they did is they run the Amsoil for 180,000 miles in the transmission and uh, they selected the transmission to, to tear apart and see how everything looked. And what you're, sh you're seeing here is the synthetic Amsoil, um, even after 180,000 miles, contained 83% of its original oxidation inhibitors. And uh, you can see the, the valve body here looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, the clutches, again, they're clean, uh, very little signs of wear on them. Uh, very good condition. Um, this is the kind of protection in the desert heat of Las Vegas that the Amsoil provides. So one of the best ways to extend the life of your transmission is through the use of that Amsoil Signature Series ATF. As we go down to this next sheet here, it gives you all the specifications, all the uh, ASTM specifications here on the two, two products. The ATF is the older formulation, the ATL is the low viscosity right here. So as we go to the specifications, Here's the applications for the older ATF, and this is just part of them. The other, the rest of it's at the top of the other page. I'll show you that here. Right here is the remainder of the specs for that older ATF. And then right here is the specifications for the low viscosity ATF for most of the newer transmissions. So this gives you uh, all the specifications for that fluid, and uh, it shows you significantly how much better that performs than the regular fluids out there. Uh, if you want to extend the life of your automatic transmission, this uh, chemical engineered synthetic signature series Amsoil is the best way to do it. I also have a website, fluidcapacity.com, and if you click on this auto and light truck fluid lookup guide, it'll bring you to a build list, put in the year of your vehicle, hit that build list button, it'll bring up all the vehicles A to Z, and we're dealing with Volkswagen and we'll go down here to Touareg and it's got a 4.2 engine in it. Now on the right side you'll see it brings up all the fluids that Amsoil recommends for each cavity. And then you scroll down a little further it will give you the oil filters, air filters, and a little further down it gives you if there's any chassis lubrication points it'll tell you how many points there are. Also gives you the capacities here, the engine, cooling system, transmission differential, transfer case, uh, and down below it's got the torques for the old drain plug and the fill plugs for the uh, transfer case and the drain plug. So we're looking today at the automatic transmission. The initial fill is not specified. The total fill is about 9.5 quarts. Okay, so what we'll do is print this off here. Uh, it's a nice handy button there we can print off for each car. That way you don't have to try and find it in your owner's manual. And it's a very handy tool for you. The other thing that we have is the transmission filter and I'll give you the part number for this one. It's an 09D transmission right up here is the part number. Uh, these are Volkswagen, genuine Volkswagen parts. So that's the filter and this here is the pan gasket and the number on that one is a is right here. It's an 09D number. And then also there's a plug in the bottom. Uh, for checking the fluid level and there's a crush washer and there's a part number for that uh, smaller crush washer for the plug. 
So we're going to go ahead and start dropping that oil and I'll show you the procedure for checking the fluid level and uh, uh, basically how to, there's no dipstick on this one, so we're going to show you how, how the procedure is for checking that oil when we get all done. Then we're going to do a flush after we get the filter changed uh, so we can flush out what's left in the torque converter and get a majority of that old fluid out. So we'll get started. Okay, we're going to drain this fluid out. It's a five millimeter Allen head. Ah, there she comes. Vehicle has about 100,000 miles on it. Don't know the history of whether that fluid's been changed or not. You can kind of see what it looks like. Ain't looking real pretty. It's time. So we're going to drain that down. Then we're going to uh, take all our bolts out around here. These are 10 millimeter heads on these bolts, I believe. We'll take down our pan and uh, get our filter serviced. So we'll get that done and be back with you. All right, there's one bolt on the front on the passenger side over here that you have a really hard time getting a socket and ratchet on to get it out. And that transmission cooler line is kind of in the way. And what I did is there's a bolt right up here on the flywheel housing that holds that transmission cooler line. We take that out and then we should be able to move that line just enough to be able to get that ratchet in there and get that bolt out. It's kind of a snug fit. The rest of the bolts come out pretty good, but that one's got a little sideways push from that tranny cooler line. I think I can maybe get it by hand now. Let me try it. Yeah, I can get it out by hand now. So yeah, loosening up that tranny cooler line up there, take that bolt out, it helps give you a little more room to get in there. Alright, so we're just about ready to get that pan down. We'll be back with you. Okay, we're getting ready to take this pan down. We drained out as much as we could through that uh, small hole. Go ahead and take the pan down. There's going to be some oil coming at you a little bit. You want to have a drain pan under you to catch it. Here we go. Stuff looks a lot like chocolate milk. Okay, so we're going to take that pan down, get that out of the way. Pull the gasket down, and then there's several bolts holding that, uh, that transmission filter in. There's two in the front, it's like one in the back. So we're going to remove those, and then that transmission filter will come down. So we'll do that, and then we'll be back with you. Okay, we've got this uh, pan down, and most of your wear metals are going to be on the, on the magnets. And uh, take a look at that fluid there a little bit. Also, there's going to be some, uh, uh, like your clutch wear material is going to settle out here in the pan too, because the clutches are going to wear over time. And the uh, best thing is just to get that, that dirt load on out before you do the flush. And uh, most of that metal that's on those magnets is going to be breaking metal from the initial break-in. And any extra wear that comes after that. So what I'll do is pull those magnets off. You can see that fuzz on there back here. So what I'll do is soak off as much of that magnetic crap that's on there as I can, all that sludge and metal and and then when I'm done with that I'll hit them with a little bit of ether starting fluid and make sure you don't have any sparks or you're gonna have flames because ether is very flammable. And then I'll just blow them off and they're all nice and clean and dry. Okay, so I'll do that to all four of them. Now I'll clean the pan up really good, put them all back in their place, and then we're ready to go back up with the transmission filter. So that's kind of the procedure on that. Okay, we got the magnets all cleaned up, the pans all cleaned up. We're going to put those back in their spots. Now this here is where you check your transmission fluid level. We're going to have this uh, temperature up to about 110 to about 113 degrees maximum when we check it. Now the transmission fluid that's in the pan as it heats up, it's going to expand. It's going to take up more space. Okay, so there's a plug here we take out. It's a big plug. But this here's the level with the engine running. And uh, when we're up to about 110 to 113 right in that range, 
we want the fluid to be at this level and just dribbling over the edge and out. Okay, so that gives you some idea how how the fluid is checked. And I'm going to use a temperature gun to check the temperature on the bottom of the pan because most of you aren't going to have the software that that ties in with the Volkswagen. So, but I wanted to show you that uh, again. That's that's there's no dipstick, but that's the normal operating level for the transmission fluid. Okay. Somebody prior to me had uh, reused the gasket and they used silicone to make sure it didn't leak. So what we need to do and uh, make sure that everything is clean on that, nice and clean on that aluminum flange there where the transmission pan goes up against. You know, we even got a little silicone up inside there a little bit. But make sure you get all that stuff out because we want it nice and clean and smooth all the way around. And then the next thing we'll do is wipe down Wipe down that flange real good. Okay, and go around it. And make sure there's no sharp edges or anything, any burrs or anything where that gasket's going to seal. Should be nice and smooth all the way. Okay, so next thing we're ready to put up is that transmission filter. So I'm going to grab that and we'll do that next. Okay, we've got this uh, transmission filter out. And somebody's had that replaced at one time. And if you look at this O-ring, the O-ring was out of place. You can see it's been pinched right here and right here. And what it looks like is it got it got in there kind of kind of crooked or cockeyed, kind of like that, and then it got it got pressed in. So it wasn't sealing completely all the way around. And it's supposed to be down over that neck, just like that. So that's something you want to make sure of when you go to put that new seal in that you got it on in the right spot that you don't pinch it on top of that filter. Okay, another thing too is this new filter. It didn't come with an O-ring. I have a selection of O-rings and I've got a Viton. It's an industry standard number 126 O-ring. Okay, so if you do buy the uh, filter from Volkswagen, make sure that you buy that, uh, that O-ring as well because it doesn't come with a filter. It should for the price of it, but it doesn't. So, but again, that's, it's a Viton. I got a Viton one and it's a number 126 is the industry standard number on that O-ring. So that'll get us in business. Okay, I got that O-ring on and what I did is I put some grease on it just to give it some extra lubrication because it kind of snaps up into that, uh, into that port there. And once you get it up there, you want to make sure that you leave it up there and hold pressure against it as you put the bolts in. Right there it snapped in. Because if you let it down, that O-ring is going to go out of place. So keep some pressure up against it. Put those bolts in, finger tight. Get it up there nice and snug with your finger. And then you can let it go. And remember the bolts for it are the short bolts. Don't get them mixed up with the transmission pan bolts. Okay, once they're up in there, they get 10 newton meters, which is 88 inch pounds of torque. So we're going to get a torque wrench and we're going to torque those down to 88 inch pounds or 10 newton meters. I'm going to snug them up first here with the ratchet and then we'll finish it up with the uh, torque wrench. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll be putting that pan on with the new gasket. Okay, we got everything cleaned up. We got that pan up and torqued, or the, the filter rather, up and torqued into place. Okay, we're gonna put this pan up and it gets eight newton meters of torque on the bolts or 70 inch pounds. Okay, so we're gonna slide this up in place with that new gasket and start putting them in. And we got the magnets all in place in the bottom of the pan. Don't wanna forget that. Now's a good time to double check that. But what I'll do is get a bolt on each side here so the pan can kind of stay up nice and then we'll put the rest of the bolts in and torque them. Alright, so here it's just a matter of putting the bolts in and torquing them out. So we're going to get that done then we'll go to the next step. Okay, to fill that transmission uh, there's a large plug. You've seen where we uh, had that uh, level check. It's a bigger plug. We need to fill it through that. So. Uh, they do make a special tool for it. I do not have it. And most of you probably aren't going to have it either. So what I did is I made a gooseneck uh, uh, to go inside there and fill it. Because you're going to have to pump it in from the bottom. It's kind of a goofy design. You don't have a plug on the side to fill it. you got to go up through the bottom. So what I've got here is a heat gun. And this is just plain poly tubing like you'd find at Menards. 
um, polyethylene tubing and uh, it bends fairly easily. You can use either a torch or a, a heat gun like what I've got here and I'll show you how to bend it. So what we're going to do is just kind of hold it there, get it soft enough so it'll get pliable, kind of bend it into a U. If you got some compressed air, you can blow that through it and kind of cool it off. Oop, dropped it. Okay, so what it'll do, it'll hold that form. And then once you got that form made, you can take the hose slicer, come out here where you just got a little bit of a bend. And give it a slice. Come on. There it goes. Okay. And what you got there is a nice little neck that'll go up inside that big hole. And it'll dump your oil inside that transmission pan. You can hook onto this hose with whatever you have for a pump to pump it in. So that gives you some idea how to do that. It takes a little bit of heat. You could probably do it with a torch too. You just want to make sure you don't put too much heat on it. It gives you a nice little gooseneck to be able to get up inside that transmission to be able to fill it. Okay, we've got that new crush washer on this uh, drain plug. We're going to torque that down. And that gets 77 inch pounds of torque. And when I took it off, I had used a 5 millimeter because it was so rusted in there I couldn't tell it was a Torx. But it's actually a T40. Okay, so got that done. Now we're going to go ahead and fill it. And here's that tool I made. It's got that uh, J bend in it. We can push that right up in. And what I've done is I made an adapter here to go to my pumper. You can kind of see what I made. And we're going to fill it till it comes out of here. And then we're going to put that plug in. Take this snout out, put the plug in. Okay, they're starting to come out. Okay, put that plug in for now. Just put it in finger tight. And then we're going to show you where to take the lines off to do the flush. Now these, these here are the cooler lines. We're up front here. And uh, the top one's the one we need to come off, but they both have to... We have a bolt going through both of them right here. It's a 10 millimeter head on them. So we're going to take that 10 millimeter bolt or 10 millimeter head bolt out. Okay. Pull. Now, depending on where you live, if you live where there's a lot of road salt, you may have to take a screwdriver and kind of work this out because there's an o ring on the snout of those hoses. You can see it right here. And what will happen is that road salt will get in there and it will build up corrosion on that. Okay, so the top one's the one we want. There it comes. Okay, so the top one, the fluid's coming from the tranny up. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this flush until we see a nice color change. Get my headlight on here. Here we go. Okay, go ahead and start it up. Turn it off. Okay, when it starts sputtering like that, that means we're running out of fluid in the pan. And we're still not there yet. So what we're going to do is fill it up again. 
and then we're going to go until we see a nice color change. We want a nice cherry red color coming out of it, and we're not there yet. So we're going to fill it up again, and then uh, we'll do that flush again. Now we initially put in uh, four quarts in that pan until it came out of that overflow, and then we went until it started sputtering out of this line. Now we've put in another four quarts, and we're going to go until we get a nice color change. Go ahead and start it. Ta -da. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking now. We're getting to a nice cherry red. It was almost like a chocolate color before. But you can see it's definitely coming around now. I think we're going to call that good right there. Okay, we'll hook these uh, cooler lines back up again. And uh, then we'll fill that transmission. I'll show you the procedure for that, and then we'll recheck the level again. Okay, we've done the flush. We're going to uh, refill that transmission again because we went till it sputtered. Okay. And this time around when we fill it and it starts running out, we're going to have them start the uh, vehicle up. So when I have them start it up, after it starts running out, it's going to pump down what's in that pan and we're going to fill it until it comes out again. Go ahead and start it. So we're going to keep pumping in until it comes out again with it running. Okay, there it is. It's starting to run out. So we're going to pull our thing out there and we're going to put that plug in. Okay. Once we get it up to the temp that we want, 113 is the maximum, we'll take that plug out again, and we want it just running out. So I'm gonna have them do one more thing. Go ahead and apply the brake and go through the gears, forward to reverse. Okay, go back to park. Okay, we still have fluid running out, so we're good there. Okay, you can shut it off. Okay, so that gives us the right amount of fluid with it running. And now we're going to get it up to that temp of 113 degrees, and we'll pull this plug back out again and verify how much fluid we got. We want it just dribbling out. So we'll do that next. Okay, we're getting ready to check this. We're getting that tranny temp up. The thing you can use, you can buy a cheap uh, uh, infrared gun like this. This will work good for checking the temp on the bottom of that tranny pan. Um, what I've got is a uh, thermal imaging camera. And it can kind of show you what it looks like here. And right now, trying to take the full temp. We're supposed to be between 95 and 113 degrees. So, back it off here a little bit. Okay, we're at about 103 degrees right now. And the maximum temperature over here is 107. Okay, so we're, we're right in that range, 107, 100, 104, 108, right in that range. And that's where we're gonna check it at. And uh, what we're gonna do is take the plug out. Okay, and the fluid is just dribbling out nice right there. So right there is about where we're going to leave it. Okay, go ahead and shut it off. Okay, so the torque on this big plug here is uh, 77 foot-pounds, which is, I'll look it up here in my paper, 70 newton meters or 51 foot-pounds. Okay, so that big plug 70 newton meters, 51 foot pounds. Okay, and uh, that drain plug again was 20 newton meters or 177 inch pounds. So that gives you some idea. So we're pretty well done here. We're going to torque that plug down. The other thing is uh, the uh, small uh, line, transmission cooler line, we had that bolt out, and the torque on that's going to be about, uh, about 9 foot pounds. I'm sorry, 70 five inch pounds is about what we want to put on those bolts 
uh, that one that we had up here on this cooler line. Remember we moved that cooler line and then also on the uh, cooler up on the front on the radiator up by the radiator where we took those two lines off same torque on that. So that'll uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, transmission flush and I should see how much fluid I used. Give me a second and I will tell you. I used just over 13 quarts of fluid to do this flush. And we got fluid that looks nice cherry red now. So that should help significantly not only with the smoother shifting but uh, with the transmission life. So I want to thank you for watching my video and have a great day. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amsoil Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website donswell.com also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.